bright duty every student matters now the new trends in religious beliefs that is the islamic traditions so what it says about that bhakti movement the political effects were also one of the major factor of this though the bhakti movement was primarily a religious movement it had some political effects as well social effect cultural effect and the religious effect as well as economic effect was also there and the political effect was also there so coming to discuss about that the political effect of the bhakti movement this has influenced the religious policy of akbar influenced by the bhakti movement reformers the mughal emperor akbar adopted a policy of religious tolerance towards the his subjects he abolished jizya on the hindus entered into a matrimonial relations with the with them appointed them to high jobs and gave them religious freedom this is all done by the great ruler of the mughal empire akbar then the rise of sikh and as political power the other important effect of the bhakti movement on the indian political system was the rise of the sikh and the marathas as political force in the punjab the bhakti movement was led by guru nanak dev and his successors gradually this movement gave birth to the sikh religion the sikh rose as a political power after ad 1699 and gradually established their independent kingdom similarly in maharashtra the bhakti movement created a spirit of unity among the marathas and encouraged shivaji to establish a hindu kingdom in 1674 he declared himself an independent and sovereign ruler and assumed the title of chhatrapati so this was the political effect of of the bhakti movement in our country now coming to that the complete the islamic traditions how it was practiced in our country during the mughal period the jimmi means protected and is derived from the arabic word jimma which means protection it was developed for peoples who followed revealed scriptures such as the jews and christians and lived under muslim rule they paid a tax called jizya and received protection from the muslims in india this status was extended to hindus as well but during the period of akbar it was removed also from the hindus in general rule general rulers often adopted a flexible policy towards their subjects for example several rulers gave land endowment and the grant tax that is the exemptions of hindu jain zoroastrian christian and jewish religious institutions they also showed respect and devotion towards the non muslim religions muslim sects and their practices what are these are this says that the developments that followed the coming of islam were not confined to ruling elites in fact they permeated far and wide to the subcontinent amongst different social strata that is peasants artisans warriors merchants and a few all those who adopted islam accepted in principle the five pillars of the faith that is there is one god allah prophet muhammad is his messenger offering prayers five time a day giving alms fasting during the month of ramzan and performing pilgrimage to mecca this is all the five pillars of islam then it comes about that the popular practice of this muslim sects and their popular practices the universal feature of islam declined due to the sectarian practices that is shia and sunni this is about that the universal features this is however often conveyed with the co- covered with the diversities in practices derived from the sunnis and the shia sect and the influence of local customary practices this is about that for example arab muslim traders who settled malabar coast they adopted malayalam language and the matrilineal system this is the language and in place of the patrilineal they have accepted the matrilineal the best example of the blending of a universal faith and the local traditions is most 
then the architectural features of mosques are universal orientation towards mecca and the placement of the mihrab that is the prayer niche and the minra minbar that is the pulpit there are variations such as roofs and the building materials other than this also arab muslim traders who settled along the malabar coast in india adopted the local language malayalam and they also adopted the some local customs that is the marriage practices and the inheritances the old blend of islam that is universal faith with local tradition is found in the architecture of mosque many architectural mosques has the universal they are towards the mecca and minra pulpit but there were several variations such as roofs and the building materials which is this is the cheraman perumal jama masjid in kodungallur malik dinar mosque that is the kasara gold the sa hamadan mosque in srinagar on the banks of the river jhelum built in 1395 it is one of the best examples of kashmiri wooden architecture this is now naming of different communities the term hindu and muslims did not gain currency for a long time for instance the term muslim or musallaman were not used till the 14th century instead they were identified in terms of the religions from which they came for instance the turkish rulers were designated as turuksha that is tajika were people of tajikistan and parashika were from persia the term other people was used to for few migrants the term malecha was used for those who did not observe the norms of caste society and spoke those languages which were not derived from the sanskrit word in the chapter 3 we have already discussed about that the malechas and which the people who they are not fit in the social norms of the brahmins the brahmanical social norms which they are not fitting in that they are given that the different names so malechas were people from the central asia they used for their the observe that the caste system and spoke those languages which were not derived from the sanskrit the term however rarely denoted a distinct religious community of muslims in opposition of the hindus meaning of sufism what is this the word means the sufism were a group of religious minded people in islam they were critical of the dogmatic definitions of scholastic methods of interpreting the quran they emphasized interpretation of quran on the basis of personal experience so this is what it says about that the sufis were a sect of muslim theologians who left a great impact on indian society the term sufi is generally under a muslim sage or a saint it is an english word coined in the 19th century and the word under the sufism in islamic text is the tasawwuf so tasawwuf some writers are of the view that it is derived from the word safa purity imply that a sufi is one of the gods elect who has been purified of all worldly evils some has connected sufi with saf that is rank suggesting that he is spiritually in the first rank by virtue of his communion with god abu nasr ul saraj derives the word from saf that is wool because the woolen remnant or blanket was the dress and the badge of the saint still another view is that the word sufi is derived from the word sofia meaning wisdom so this way these are the different words and the different meanings of the sufis in the 11th century sufism evolved into a well developed movement with a body of literature of quranic studies and the sufi practices sufism was organized in an institution around the hospice of khanka khanka hospice or khanka controlled by a teaching master known as sheikh 
पीर और मुर्शीद ही इन रोल डिसाइपल्स एंड अपॉइंटेड अ सक्सेसर एंड एस्टेब्लिश रूल्स फॉर अ स्पिरिचुअल कंडक्ट एंड इंटरेक्शन बिटवीन इनवेंट्स एज वेल एज बिटवीन द नियर पर्सनस एंड द मास्टर्स तो द सूफीज डिड नॉट फॉर्म अ सिंगल ऑर्गेनाइज सेक्ट they had neither a prophet nor a sacred book nor a unified code of religious doctrines they accepted muhammad as the prophet and the authority of the quran in course of time however they absorbed a variety of ideas and the practices from other religions such as christianity zoroastrianism buddhism and the indian philosophical system that is vedanta and yoga it is in its developed state was a stream which gathered volume by joining of tributes from many lands many lands means that they have collected the ideas from the different religion some theos theosophical and the pantheistic elements entered into it from non islamic sources this is the theosophical and the pantheistic elements which entered into it from the non islamic sources also like the bhakti school the union of the human soul with god through devotion was the essence of the sufi faith like the bhakti reformers the sufis also did not observe the conventional rituals Sufism had also features common with Buddhism. The Sufis ideas of annihilation of the self, constant awareness of human frailty, the ascetic way of life, the practice of begging alms and living in religious shrines indicate the impact of the Buddha's teaching. so this way this sufism is correlated with the bhakti movement as well as the sufism in this now the ideas and the practices of the sufi saints in our country what are they this is with this the practice how it is been practiced so first of all coming to discuss about the silsila literally meaning a chain signifies the continuous link between master and disciple stretching as an unbroken spiritual genealogy to the prophet muhammad and this silsila began to appear in different parts of the islamic world around the 12th century next is about the darga is the persian term and its meaning is tomb shrine when the sheikh died his tomb shrine became the center of devotion for his followers this encourages the practice of pilgrimage or ziyarat to his grave this is a ziyarat word used in place of the pilgrimage so particularly on his death anniversary it was believed that after the death the soul of say get united with the soul of allah people sought their blessings to attain material and spiritual benefits thus evolved the cult of the say revered as wali chesti in the subcontinent indian subcontinent of the other groups of sufis who migrated to india in the late 12th century the chestis were the most influential when they have 12th century this was because they adapted successfully the local environment and adopted several features several features of indian devotional traditions chesti order founded in india by khwaja muhyiddin chesti and his disciple was the famous bakhtiyar kaq jiske leaders like nizamuddin auliya then naziruddin chirag e delhi then sohrawardi order famous leaders sheikh shahabuddin sohrawardi and the hamid bud the khanka was the center of social life it comprised several small rooms and a big hall where inmates and visitors lived and prayed The Sheikh lived in a small room on the roof of the hall, where he met visitors in the morning and evening, and there was an open kitchen. This is the Langar. 
From morning till evening, people from all walks of life came to seek the blessings from the sage in various matters. Other visitors included poets such as Amir Hassan Sizi and the Amir Khosrow, and the court historian Ziauddin Parani, and all of them wrote about the sage. The practices that were adopted by Chisti in their khanka were going before the sage. We have bound before the sake, offering water to visitors, shaving the heads of initiates, yogic exercise. Sheikh Nizamuddin appointed his disciple to set up hospices in various parts of the subcontinent. In this way, they came in touch with the people which led to the popularization of Chisti practices, teachings and also the theme of Sheikh. Chisti, divorce, devotionalism, ziyarat, and kavwali. So, pilgrimage called ziyarat. Tombs of Sufi saints is prevalent all over the world. The practice is an occasion for seeking the Sufi's spiritual grace, that is barakat. This is known as the barakat. For more than seven centuries, people from different walks of life expressed their devotion at the dargahs of the five great Chisti saints. The use of music and dance including mystical chants performed by specially trained musicians or kavals to evoke divine ecstasy is also part of ziyarat. The Sufis remember God either by reciting the zikr, the divine names or evoking his presence through sama or performance of mystical music known as kavali. The most popular dargah is that of Khwaza Moinuddin Chisti, popularly known as Garib Nawaz. This is comforter of the poor. The Dargah became so popular because of the following reasons. What is the reason behind it? The austerity and piety of the Sheikh, greatness of his spiritual successor and the patronage of royal visitors. Location of Azmir was another factor for its popularity as it was located on the trade route connecting Delhi and Gujarat, it attracted number of travellers. Muhammad bin Tughlaq was the first sultan to visit the Dargah. Akbar, the Mughal emperor, visited Dargah at Azmir 14 times in his life and these visits were aimed at seeking blessings for new conquest, fulfilling of his woes and to get sons. Many of his wishes were soon fulfilled, fulfilled and thus as an offering. He gave generous gifts on each visit. He offered a huge cauldron to facilitate cooking for pilgrimage, pilgrims. He even got a mosque constructed within the Dargah. This is the outer look of Sikh Dargah of Khwaza Mohanibin Chisti. Sufis and the straight state patronage. The Chisti tradition was austere, but it did not isolate political power. Sufis accepted unsolicited grants and donations from the political elites. The sultans set up charitable trust as endowments for hospices and grant tax-free land, that is inam. The Chistis accepted donations in cash and kind and used for their Immediate requirements such as food, clothes, living quarters and ritual necessities such as Sama, the moral high status of the Sufis attracted people from all walks of life. Sufis and the state patronage. So, the kings wished to secure their support. Kings simply did not need to show their association with Sufis and also required legitimating for them. When the Turks set up the Delhi Sultanate, Sufis resisted the insistence of the ulama on imposing Sharia as state law because they anticipated opposition from the subject. So this is about that. The Chisti saints lived in life of austerity. This is all about that. The Sultan also came to be came to depend on the Sufi to interpret the Sharia. It was believed that Aulia could intercede with the God to improve the material and spiritual conditions of the people. As a result, King got the shrines 
of the Sufis near built near their tombs. They have the they have built their tombs near their the Sufi shrines. So there were instances of conflict between the sultans and the Sufis. To assert their authority, both expected certain rituals performed like kissing of the feet, etc. So these are all such things which has been performed. This is about that the Chisti preferred use the donations for their summer. The piety scholarship and the people's belief in their miraculous powers made the Sufis popular among the masses. Then the language which is used, language and the genres of the uh, Sufi poetry, some up. The Chisti Sufi adopted local language in Delhi. The followers of the Chisti Silsila conversed in Hindi, the language of the local people. Sufi said Baba Farid composed verses in the Punjabi language. Some of his verses were placed in Adi Grantha, the sacred book of the Sikh. Some Sufi saints composed long poems to express ideas of divine love. For instance, Prem Akhyan, Love Story, Malik Muhammad Jaisi composed Padmavat. It revolves around the romance of Padmavat, Padmini and Raja Ratan Sen, the king of Chittor. The, these compositions were usually recited in hospices during summer. In the south, a different genre of Sufi poetry was composed. In and around the town of Bijapur in Karnataka, the short poems were in the Khani. The Khani means it is a variant of Urdu. These poems were mostly sung by women while grinding grain and spinning. Other poems were in the form of that is Tura, Turinama or Lalabis and that Shadi Nama or wedding songs. It is through this medium that Islam gradually spread in the villages of the Ekpan. Other Sufi orders were the Qadri Silsila was founded by the Sheikh Abdul Qadir Zulani of Baghdad in the 12th century AD. But this sect was brought to India by Sayyid Muhammad and he settled at Uch in Sindhi, the best known saint of the Qadri, Qadri sect in the, is in the Punjab was Hazrat Mia, Hazrat Mia Mir who laid the foundation stone of the golden temple at Amritsar. This is the importance of the Qadri Silsila. Then the Nas, that is the Naqshbandi Silsila. Naqshbandi Silsila is originated in Central Asia in the beginning of the 13th century. It is said that the Babar was a devotee of Naqshbandi Sen, Khwaza Abdul Ahar. That is Abdullah Aharar. In India, the Naqshbandi Silsila was started by Khwaza Baki Billa. One of the, that is the Naqshbandi Saint Sheikh Ahmad Sir Hindi was an orthodox Muslim. He was opposed to Mughal Emperor Akbar's policy of religious toleration. Hazrat Sayyid Ahmad Hazrat Sayyidi Ahmad was another renowned Sufi. His shrine is at Sakhi Sarwar in Pakistan. He was also called Sakhi Sarwar, Generous Saint and the Lakha Lata that is the bestower of Laks. He attracted the followers from the Hindus as well as the Muslims. He is the most striking example of interaction between the followers of Hinduism and Islam. The founder of the Shastri, this is the Shastri, order of the Shah Abdullah Shastri of Mandu. Shastri is the Shah Abdullah Shastri, Shastri, he was the founder. He was greatly influenced by the ideas of Jogis. Jogis, Siddhas and the Nafs. These were also the three of the followers and the, they were also involved in the Bhakti movement. Reconstructing histories of the religious traditions. How this, the traditions has been reconstructed. What were the effects? Sufis and the state patronage, just now we have discussed. So what were the effects of Sufism? The Sufism attracted the Hindus to Islam. 
the different the writers they have given their idea about that the orthodox muslim ulamas used force and con- coercive methods to convert the indians to islam but the sufis on the other hand tried to win converts the ceremonies customs and this the converts through love and affection this way this sufism is different from the islam sifflah islam was converting them by force they the coercive methods were adopted by islams but the sufis they tried to win to the conversion with the serendis through the love and affection they first learned hindi and became conversant with the hindu customs and ceremonies they dressed like the hindu saints and adopted their way of life and then started preaching islam and they were treated kindly in the shrines of the sufis without any distinction of caste or creed means that the concept of the brotherhood was also there in sufism next thing comes about that what is the other effect of islam cultural intermingling of the hindus and the muslims how it intermingled the sufi saints exhibited religious tolerance towards the hindus as a result there grew cultural and social intercourse between the hindus and the muslims the sufi saints learned hindi and respected hindu religious practices between that hindu religious practices they also observed the fast and indulged in self torture and penance however before the saints they served drinking water to the pilgrims and asked the new converts to get their heads shaved and they borrowed all these practices from the hindu yogis this was the practice of the hindu yogi hindu yogi also they saved their hair the hindus also visited the sufi shrines khankas where they were treated at par with muslims gradually social intercourse between the hindus and the muslims increased and they started adopting each other ceremonies and celebrating festivals in common next point it is about that the effects of sufism uplift of the destitute and the downtrodden sufism ameliorate the condition of the poor helpless and the downtrodden sections of the society the sufi saints what they did and the sects they considered it their religious and the moral duty to help the downtrodden this is they have just started taking it as their the religious and the moral duty in that form they have started giving their help to them the rulers and the wealthy also followed the example of the sufi saints by giving assistance to the poor and the needy one example is quoted here about the feroz shah tughlaq established a separate department called diwan e khairat to look after the welfare of the widows orphans and crippled and the poor later sersa suri also he opened free kitchens to feed the poor then guru nanak devs the main teaching is based on that the first sangat then pangat the first pangat then sangat the concept of the common kitchen about the langar development of the regional languages and urdu this is the effects of sufism about their popularity how they gain the popularity the sufi sikhs wrote poetry in urdu which greatly helped in the development of the urdu literature the this language gradually became the lingua franca of the people the enrichment of urdu poetry also contributed to the growth of music the sufi saints also wrote the language of those areas in which they settled their sacred literature became popular both among the hindus and the muslims living in those territories for instance sheikh farid who wrote his poetry in the saraiki that is the lehindi which is also known as the saraiki punjabi his verses were incorporated in the adi grantha by guru arjan dev similarly there are traces of the sufi literature in hindi language also rise in the number of places of pilgrimages 
the tombs and the shrines of the Sufi saints developed into the places of pilgrimage for the Muslims. Kuswan Singh, he observed. What he observed? Not many could afford to travel to Mecca and yet they wanted to go on pilgrimage. They made tombs of Sufi saints there, lesser Mecca. So that way the importance is given to this the shrines, the Dargah of the Sufi saints. Thus there was a great rise in the number of places of pilgrimage for the Muslims. Progress of art and architecture. The devotees of Sufism built magnificent tombs and the shrines of the Sufi saints. As a result, art and architecture made much progress. For instance, the shrine of Sheikh Moinuddin Chisti at Ajmer, the tomb of Sheikh Salim Chisti at Fatehpur Sikri, and that of the Sheikh Nizamuddin Aliya at Delhi are most notable in the history of the development of architecture in India. Just now in the previous slide you saw that Ms. Ajmer Sarif, Darga of Moinuddin Chisti, Khwaza Moinuddin Chisti's Darga. So now it is considered as that the Sufism as an all India movement, not specified in one corner of the country, but throughout the country. The Sufi movement is spread all over India during the reign of Muhammad bin Tughla. He was the first person who visited the Ms. Darga of Khwaza Moinuddin Chisti. And this is about that the ideas also spread in the Deccan part of our country. In their zeal for converting the Hindus to Islam, the Sufis particularly employed the same methods as the early Christian missionaries of the 18th century did in Bengal. In the 18th century, what the policies were adopted by the Christian missionaries about the conversion of Hindus into the Christianity, the same was adopted by these people by the Sufis. Madras and Bengal and the Madras provinces. So they use the language of the people to patronize their ideas. First of all, what they did? They learned the language of the ordinary people, the common people. And then they try to convert them into the Christianity or into the Islam. So their work was facilitated by the establishment of khankas through which they maintained contact with the people. They have constructed the khankas. And there they are just doing the meeting with the people of the or with the local people. Their work was not confined to the Muslims alone. They were keen to spread the message of Islam among the Hindus, particularly those of the lower caste. Basically, the lower caste Hindus, they have just started converting themselves into the different religions. In some sections of Muslims, they were even more popular than the Mullahs. Due to this reason, the Sultan granted rent-free lands to the Khankas and to their sales, sources for reconstructing histories of their religious traditions. The historians draw a variety of sources to reconstruct history, the religious traditions. This is about this, reconstructing histories of religious traditions. Historians used a variety of sources to reconstruct histories of religious death. It includes stupas, monasteries and temples. Historians also draw on textual sources including devotional literature, hagiographies. These sources enable, enable historians to understand certain religious beliefs and practices. They range from the simple direct language of the vachanas of Vasavana to ornate language of the Farman of the Mughal, Farman of the Mughal emperors. Notice, Farman means that the notice. Understanding each type of text requires different skills. Historians have to acquire familiarity with several languages and to have aware of the subtle variations in style that characterized each type. The sources which has been used to reconstruct the history of Sufi traditions were the treaties of the manuals, Malfuzak, then Maktabak, Tazdikars, 
all these are the sources which has been collected by the writers by the historians to write the history about the sufi traditions to collect the sources the sources which has been used to reflect the ideas of sufism in the context of our country so this way this chapter is ended some of that the important terms are also given over here and the very interesting chapter which we have learned through it and the chapter is based on that the emergence of a new type of the religion which is named as bhakti mukti